Hi guys, so today we're going to make some guacamole So, first off I'm going to show you all of the ingredients that we're going to need to make our guacamole um, We're also going to be making some pita chips today just out of some pita bread that I have And sorry if you guys can hear any background noise today. It's currently raining really hard outside. So first off, here is the pita bread that I picked up at the store this last week. Now this pita bread is about to go stale, so that's why I want to go ahead and make this into some pita chips and serve it with guacamole. Now, I don't make my guacamole like your typical guacamole. I add some extra ingredients that are not necessary. So first off, I'm going to be using two avocados. Um, I was hoping that these avocados were both good inside and we were in luck for this video. I'd had them for a couple days and I was worried that they were a little overripe but once I opened them up they were actually perfect for this recipe Next up I have some Little Glory tomatoes A lot of people don't add tomatoes to their guacamole but I like the added texture and flavor that it brings. I really like guacamole that is a bit chunkier, so I find that tomatoes help with that texture. Next, I typically like to add some roasted sweet corn. Now, I have not heard of anybody else adding this just at your typical restaurant or party, but I really enjoy this flavoring. So this is the roasted sweet corn. It comes frozen in this package, and I got this from Trader Joe's. This is by far the best frozen corn that I've ever used. So whenever I go to Trader Joe's, I try to pick up couple packages. Next, we have our red onion. You can use any type of onion that you prefer, but today I just had a red onion left. I typically like to use shallots. I find that they have um, a milder flavor to them. We'll also need the juice of one lime possibly two limes if this one does not work out. I also have some cilantro here. I'm sorry, I know the videos kind of cut everything off towards the top. Um, but I store my cilantro actually in a mason jar. Um, I read online that if you put it in water in a jar, if you place a large plastic bag over the top, that it will stay fresh in the fridge for quite some time. You will need a Ziploc bag though to place over the top. You don't want to use just a plastic grocery bag or anything like that. And I've had cilantro last several weeks for me when I've stored it this way. Now for our spices, here I have some Mediterranean sea salt. I typically do not like to add salt to my meals. I know it's not the healthiest, but here the guacamole will definitely need it. 
I really like the packaging for that salt as well. I got that at Target a couple months ago. Then we're also going to add some pepper. Here I have some bourbon barrel smoked pepper and it is absolutely delicious. I got this pepper from a local spice shop and you could go in and test out all the spices and this was definitely my favorite one that I tried. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to make the pita chips. So first off, I just covered this pan with some tin foil. It's an older pan, so that's the only reason why. And I'm going to want to put some cooking spray down, just so the pita bread will not stick. Here I'm using an olive oil cooking spray, which I found to work quite well. I don't like to just use the typical Crisco spray or anything like that. So here I'm taking our pita bread, and I'm going to open the package and take out some of our pitas. Now these were already split in half. They came that way in the packaging. So I'm going to take just one pita at a time and I'm going to cut it into three different triangles. Now please do not judge my cutting skills. I am definitely not a professional So I'm left-handed, so growing up I learned um, no one else in my family was left-handed, so I learned everything a little bit differently. And I now notice that I sometimes use my utensils in a strange way. Um, people have commented. It looks weird. It probably is. It's just me. So I went ahead and took out some more of our pita bread. Since we're using two avocados, we will want quite a bit of pita bread to dip into our guacamole. Sorry, you can probably hear my dog in the background. preparing himself for bed. Alright, so we're still just cutting up this pita bread. And that should be about the last of it there. So we're going to go ahead and take our pan and we're going to place the pita on the pan. Now we do need to split each of our pita triangles in half since it was the pita pockets. So that's all I'm doing. Now some of the pita bread will be overlapping and that's okay. I like it when some of the pitas are crispy and then when some are This honestly is one of my favorite things to make. I usually have guacamole at least once a week and sometimes I even have it just for the full meal. But I really enjoy making uh, some chorizo potato tacos. So I'll have to share that recipe with you guys one day. This video was just little bit too long to add that in. So here I am still just tearing apart our pita bread. 
and laying everything out pretty flat. When we're done, we're going to want to put some olive oil on top. Olive oil is one of the healthiest oils to cook with, so I would definitely recommend using that. Coconut oil is another healthy option. Not sure how it would work in this situation though. I've never personally cooked with it before. I'm just going to go ahead and use my spray on top again because it is the olive oil. You can also add some spices here. If you do not plan on serving the pita chips with guacamole, you can always add some basil or any types of spices that sound good to you. So here, I'm just going to spray all over the top of the pitas. I really want to get all of them coated with olive oil so they turn out nice and crispy in the oven. So I'm going to go place these in the oven for 7 minutes at 425 degrees. Bread is cooking. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I make my guacamole. In the bowl, I already have our frozen corn placed in there. So I went ahead and heated up just a little bit of the corn on the stove top. It took about two minutes to do. I didn't want to get it super hot. So once again, this is my absolute favorite thing to buy at Trader Joe's. Well, one of my favorites. I use it in a lot of different recipes. So now we're going to go ahead and cut up our avocados. First, I'm going to show you though this nifty avocado, um, I guess avocado knife or cutter that I received as a Christmas gift one year. My parents like to usually get me a small type of cooking item um, that they put in my stocking. So they got me this and I was really happy. As you can see here, I'm using the knife end to cut all the way around the avocado. Then we'll just twist the avocado. And I was so pleasantly surprised to find that it was still a perfect avocado and was not overripe. Now here, I know you can't see very well, but I'm using the slicer side of my avocado tool. So all I'm doing is pushing it into the avocado and it comes out in these nice little slices. avocado was a little softer than I would prefer, so the slices weren't beautiful, um, but that's okay. We're going to mash everything up together. So all I did there was I took the pit remover, and if you push it into the pit and twist, it comes right out. And there, I scooped out the rest of my first avocado. Some still got stuck in between the slats, so I had to kind of push it out with my fork. Now we're going to go ahead and cut up our second avocado. Now my parents got me this avocado slicer from Target, so if you want one, you can always go check it out there. It's definitely come in handy many times. I eat a lot of avocados because they're very healthy for you. 
And this whole meal is actually pretty healthy. And once again, I'm removing the pit. Sorry, you can see it. I just zoomed in a little bit too close. And I didn't realize until I had finished making the video. So there I go. And I scraped out the rest of our avocado. So now, once I get all of that avocado scraped off, I'm going to go ahead and mix everything together. So here's kind of what it all looks like. I tend to prefer my guacamole to be a bit chunkier, but these avocados were extremely soft. Day. So, I decided to go ahead and just mash everything together very well. It still tastes the same, it's just more of a texture preference. I don't want to mash it too much here though, because we're still going to need to add some more ingredients. So now we need to cut up the rest of our ingredients for our guacamole. First, I'm going to cut up some of our tomatoes. Once again, this is just my personal preference to add tomatoes, so you do not have to do this. I got these smaller glory tomatoes. I really prefer how easy they are. Typically, if I'm just preparing a meal, for one or two people. We sometimes don't need a whole tomato, and I found that it tends to go to waste. But these last for quite some time before going bad. So usually I'll just cut up about as many as I'll need. I found one bad tomato in the bunch. So I went ahead and set it aside. I like to cut the tomatoes up into smaller pieces. I don't really care for too much tomato juice, so I'm trying to avoid getting the liquid that's in the tomatoes. I'm trying to avoid the guacamole accidentally. Alright, so that looks like it's probably enough for the tomatoes. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut our red onion. I typically don't like to use a ton of red onion. And here I found shell is just a little bad, so I went ahead and took it off. So I don't use a ton of onion, just because I prefer it if it's cooked. I don't really care for raw onion. I do like the flavoring that it adds, but I just prefer cooked a little better. I honestly prefer shallot to any other type of onion. And they're kind of like a mixture between an onion and um, some garlic. But they didn't have any fresh shallots when I went to the grocery this week. They had a couple left in the bin, but they looked pretty bad to me. So we went ahead and went with the red. So we're now going to mix in everything pretty well. These are all the main ingredients of our guacamole. We still need to add our spices and some more flavoring. But for now, this is the main part of the dish. Alright, so 
So here we're gonna add some cilantro. So I'm picking off just a bunch of the leaves that look the best. What we're going to do is we're going to bunch them all together and then cut them up. These leaves were pretty large to leave whole, so I thought it'd be best to chop them into finer pieces. And I didn't pick off any of the stem, so we just are using the leaves here. And it looks like I need a little bit more cilantro, so I went ahead picked off a couple more cilantro leaves. I really enjoy the way cilantro tastes, but I didn't realize that there's a large group of people that really dislike cilantro. I make dinner for quite a few people during the week and I found out that someone I make dinner for does not care for cilantro so I have to be careful in planning out my meals so we're just gonna kind of mix everything together again and I thought still needed just a little bit more cilantro right at the top. There, that looks pretty good. Alright, so next we're going to add our salt. I do not like to add a ton of salt because you can find salt in pretty much anything that is pre-packaged. I like to be very careful in the amounts that I add when I'm cooking my own food. And I tend to prefer to cook my own food. I don't like to eat a ton of prepackaged foods or anything. Really only if I'm out of time. So here we're going to add our bourbon barrel smoked pepper. And I do go quite heavy with the pepper here. I really like the flavoring of this specific pepper that I bought, so I tend to add quite a bit. I forgot to mention earlier in the ingredients list that you will want to have some red pepper flakes. These are not a necessity, but I really like the added spice that it brings to the guacamole. So be careful in how much you add if you have a guest who is sensitive to the amount of spices used in a meal. So here I am just cutting our lime in half and then making some small indentations just so the lime will juice a little easier. The slime had a lot of juice inside, so I was lucky I was able to get away with just using one lime. I really like the lime flavoring, so sometimes I'll add two limes if I'm using two avocados. So here I am, just getting the rest of the lime out. And now here's our final mix. We want to mix everything together extremely well. If you want to have a chunkier guacamole, don't push down too hard with your fork. Here, my guacamole was pretty soft and mixed together well. So now we're going to add some of our pita chips. 